like <laughs> everyone like not just asian countries but like everyone has their own curry dish yes and i found like like just amazing i think like the curry that i love most is jamaican curry yes oh it is so good and their jasmine rice together yeah. so i like uh jamaican curry um Probably because it's most similar to maybe Vietnamese curry. Okay. Because of the lemongrass. Oh, I should have tried like, it. But like Jamaican curry is more of like a stew. And yes. I love bone. I love yes. <laughs> yes. My friend would say, the pain and suffering, I need to feel that. I'm like, okay, that's a little too much. <laughs> okay. Let's, that's hilarious. Let's, let's, let's Relax. Re- let's respect the other, uh, our other friends <laughs> that don't eat meat. <laughs> but no, nah, it's just like, I need to feel the pain and suffering of the animal. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But Some people are just passionate about their food. About their meat, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> Welcome back to Passport to Perspectives. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. I am here with Miss Tiffany Wynn. Woo woo, give it up. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us with your presence. It's an honor to have you here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, first off, it's an honor being here. I feel like a celebrity. Yeah. She, I'm getting all the treatment today. But yes, my name is Tiffany Nguyen. I'm Vietnamese American, living in Korea. And I'm actually from Mississippi. But before y'all say anything, it's not the Mississippi River, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Gulf Coast states. <laughs> it's a lot of mixture of Texas all the way to Florida. So we're our own, you know, state, we say. But yes, from the beach, from the casinos. Okay. Call me the shrimp queen. Okay. No one calls me that. It's okay. <laughs> but I got proof. <laughs> ah, yeah, I just realized something. Or, I didn't put any makeup on today. You don't have to. Ah, Jesus. Look, it's Jesus. like glowing, clear. Like natural blush. What the? You know what? We're going to hope and pray that she's telling me the truth. It is. It is and just true. call it a day because <laughs> it's the morning. <laughs> Beg and forgive, you know? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your background, like where you came from, mm-hmm. how you even ended up in Korea. So... To be honest, this is like my first solo living and like international travel. Like the first international trip, not going to lie, was Canada. (laughs) And that's okay because it's still international. It's technically international. (laughs) But like my family, we're, you know, we're from the like the beach. My parents are Vietnamese. And um, so we, our comfort area is water. Okay. So I grew up on the boat. I grew up on the shrimp boats, you know, all the fishing. Like my dad entered me in like fishing camp. And I was the only girl kind of that, that, yeah, it was that serious. So we only did vacations by car, which is usually to Disney, amusement park. So I'm a roller coaster junkie. Love roller coasters. Yeah. So fun. I love the water, but I don't like the beach. Like the sand is it's it's, it's a thing. Um I get it. I'm I'm very active, so I just and I tan easily, so there's no point of me being on the beach. Facts. Unless I'm playing like beach volleyball. So we also did like cruise lines. So Ooh. I was like, that's how I got this. What kind of coffee flavor? <laughs> Some beautiful skin tone. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, you know, but like growing up. In America, there is still a lot of like Vietnamese culture in within my family, like as we live. But like, of course, we have to, you know, blend in. Of course, they say, whitewash <laughs> dating here. Um, they would be like, "So you just eat like burgers and pizza? Do you know how to use chopsticks?" I'm like, mm-hmm. the assumptions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm so Asian. Like. My Asian culture is different from, you know, South Korean culture, but it's also very similar. And not just, like, from Asian to Asian, just from, like, other cultures. That's the beauty of living in Korea, too. Absolutely. Like, experiencing other people's cultures, but also other, like, Americans, you know? Like, wow, we had the same traumas. Wow. We had had the same childhood. Like, 
Oh Absolutely. My gosh. Oh, so it's it's nice to be able to blend together with blend people out. here. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I actually just got back from Vietnam, like not too Did long you? ago. Yes. <laughs> nice. Absolutely loved it. It's a beautiful country. Have mm-hmm. you been there yet? Yes. So I traveled from Hanoi and then I went down to Ho Chi Minh. Yes. Love that. I was yes. only in Hanoi. I was staying in the old quarter. Yes. I mean, crazy, crazy, guys. But I beautiful. Love it. like, it's it, so chaotic. It's chaotically beautiful. Yeah. Seriously. Like just sitting there outside of the Cafe Sudet, like the. Mm. Let's get into your transition from studying exercise science to teaching during the pandemic. So tell us a little bit about that transition. So I chose my degree to be more active. Like I was thinking about myself, like my body, didn't want to stay out of like a cubicle and like typing. But I feel like almost all jobs have that. So I wanted to be a physical therapist. Okay. But I failed one class. My whole life I failed a class and it was physics. <laughs> so it's not easy, you guys. It's not that is not an easy class. <laughs> so apparently that sets me apart from being a physical therapist. <laughs> so I had to do like a slight I had to do a minor change. Okay. So it was pre professional. I start off with like uh, two years of community college, you know, I was getting paid going to school. Period. So then I transferred to University of South Alabama. Okay. And that's when I actually did my courses, my health and fitness courses. So I was like stressing, like, what kind of therapist can I be? Because there's a lot, you know. So um, I wanted to go into more like recreate recreational therapy nice so like that can be working at school that can be on a, like a camp for uh, kids with disabilities and I actually personally have a sister with disabilities uh, in speech and okay. hearing so um I feel like that was kind of like more of a calling at least like helping people I do get like a satisfaction of like helping people and educating right same <laughs> I'm an educator <laughs> period hair flip <laughs> I think you need like a tally of how many hair flips we do. And that's fine because nothing is better than the hair flip. It is validation for all of us ladies. Throw that out there. So also like my hobbies, I wasn't really big into like exercising, but I knew I was like athletic because um, I am also creative. So I did like theater and band growing up. Nice. Um, so... I, from that degree, I had to do some working hours, okay. like shadowing or something, but then the pandemic hit. And then I couldn't work for this one company that would give me those hours. Mm-hmm. But I did find a job to like, you know, I paid for my whole college. So I worked, you know, paying for my wow. whole college. Yeah. That's amazing. So just like for those two years and that was like my um, reason why that I went to that college too. It's more inexpensive than like a very big right. public university. And I got into like my hospital job after college. Um, actually, I was technically in college. I had to do like an extra semester because I changed to my minors. Okay. Working at the hospital, I got to experience more of the field that was gearing towards and it's more of rehabilitation. So with my degree, this exercise science, it's an umbrella term for like exercise physiologists. Okay. That's really, really technical to like athletic trainers, PE teachers, anything you want to do in that health field and education as well. But I got to work with people coming out of surgery, so like uh, like joint surgery, so okay. knee, hip, um, or into like occupational therapy, which is fine motor skills. Yes. So learning how to put on pants again, learning how to brush my teeth without re-injuring myself, learning how to get up from bed. Wow. And so I became like the head technician and got to teach other people on my staff and just working with so many doctors too it was very like a satisfying job it kept me fit it it was amazing but um I have to figure out what's the next step from here of course and that was 
not in the direction of that field, unfortunately, but fortunately. Yes. <laughs> so I also hear the sides of the PTs that I work with and with like health insurance with all like the big girl adulting things and i was like oh you said that this was a very secure job uh whatever college site i was you know looking up uh jobs at the time and so i felt like okay this is not a stable position mm. and that's what i look for in life is just be stable on my feet have a backup plan if anything fails so um I had a lot of friends in college in the international studies and they've been to Korea and they've been traveling. I was like, I was so jealous. Like you are doing your degree, but you're also doing the things that you want as a 20 year old. Wow. So I was like, I really liked Korean culture at the time. Of course, I listened to the music. I watched dramas and the food. Like I need to experience it. So I was like, hey, mom. I'm going to Korea. And she's like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. always the reaction we get. <laughs> to be nap. fair. <laughs> she was in the middle of a nap. But that's that's when enlightenment happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> she's like, no, you're not. And then she like goes back to sleep. <laughs> so uh, I secretly um, applied for green heart travel. Okay. And then that led to like hands Korea. And it's like connecting companies from overseas uh, to connect people from America to like Korea. So they're like teaching. recruiting companies. Right. Okay. Right. Coming here during uh, kind of still peak COVID, mm -hmm. uh, it was like kind of on and off again during that time. So I would say March 2020 was like the highest like yes. it just started yes. so that's when I just started my hospital job okay and then March 2021 was like still have to wear mask but people are still going to school so how did you because I know we were on lockdown in like going into 2021 into 2022 right we were not in lockdown so I would say March I say like the end of March okay and um I started like like working like April 1st. Okay. So also for Hogwans, it's a business. It's not a ah, school. Ah, so they don't even. So oh. there's morning, we say morning kindy, and okay. then like elementary after school. Okay. So morning kindy is this, you have the same class if you're a homeroom teacher and they, you can't, you can't have Zoom with kindergartners. Right. So they come in and we just all do like our restrictions and stuff like that. Um, but for afternoon, it was Zoom. And okay. And it was like different meeting rooms here and there. But it was very on and off again to the parents' response. So hog ones are run by moms of Korea. It's very irritating. <laughs> I've heard. Yeah. So I'm okay with never working at one. <laughs> There's pros and a lot of cons, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's it's I, I still I'm still here. <laughs> as long as you love it, okay? Like I didn't say love, okay. but I, I just well, said, know, I'm still here. It's stable. It's stable. <laughs> if that's where we're at. It uh, is. Dang girl, I'm trying uh, to keep you here. <laughs> Get something great. to work with. <laughs> it's, it's great. <laughs> I got lucky, like I was placed in, because I'm doing the Epic program, and Epic has its, you know, mm -hmm. good sides and bad sides That's as well, is. you know, but mm -hmm. I got lucky because they placed me in a Christian private all-girls school. Okay. So I'm super grateful to, you know, be there and not have to go through the turmoil of parents, oh. because the parents that uh, send their kids to that school, they're not really study intensive oh okay. it's That's more or less like they're learning um how to be bartenders how to be uh flight attendants baristas they're learning how to do um international jobs at this school so it's not study intensive it's more or less like a work school you know mm -hmm. so the parents aren't as super invested or into it as so other parents are schools. exactly still a beautiful place i really enjoy being there but yeah I, 
I love it. And so I hear stories about how sad some of my friends are, how stressed <laughs> out some of my friends are, and they all work at Hagwans. And I'm just like, you guys. Everything's fine. <laughs> That's, it's so sad. One of my friends is leaving the country because mm. of how bad their school is. Yeah. Because there's not much you can do to, like, get out of it, right? There, There's a lot of, like, again, like, there's a lot of hog ones, a lot of businesses. So there is ways. It is a timing thing. Um, there's been a lot of other horror stories, like, closing down mm. and, like, insurance fraud and all these things that they don't do legally. Uh -huh. uh, but I've only moved hogwans by networking. So even if I, I did both ways, of course, like putting out, like finding a recruiter and stuff like that. But I only did it through networking. So I, I feel like I did it the right way, like safely as much as I can. Cause like recommendations from friends who are leaving. I want to stay here so of i don't course. i don't have the the need to go back to america and you know restart my life there same so do oh. you i can't speak for the people that are here just um you know to make some money or m make some experience and go home and because they also have different mindsets absolutely living with foreigners from here i mean here at korea because how they be acting sometimes on the streets <laughs> um so it's it i can't speak for them but as someone who wants to stay here i do make the effort and be more cautious and actually like try to plan what's my next step i think that's great yeah. like i remember you telling me you've kind of like moved from different hagwans and different apartments and yes. like you've you've done what was best for you in the end and mm -hmm. that's the kind of life that i love because mm -hmm. i am also i'm i am stable to a certain extent, mm -hmm. I'm more or less like wherever my heart wants to be, wherever mm -hmm. I feel most comfortable, that's where I'm going to go. Because yeah. this home is wasn't given by the school. I work in Incheon. Right. 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 And that's about a 40 minute ride that way. Okay. So I walked 10 minutes to the subway station, 20 minute subway, mm -hmm. uh, six minutes to the school. That's not bad. But it's not. to some people, it's like, look, you have to have independence. So... I actually started out in Ulsan, which mm. is next to Busan. And like I said, like if you have a couch and you <laughs> you're making this a home, that's that's how you know you're gonna like work for your home here. Absolutely. But from Ulsan I moved up to here in Incheon and I actually originally wanted to come here just because I knew people of course in this area and it does like friends make it a home. And and Ulsan I had none of that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to decorate my apartment because I knew I was going to stay here long. Right. I actually quit that job just so I can move out faster. I didn't get severance. But at the time, like with like my mental health and like having no one, like no community, it was just like at the end of the day, it's still a right call, I guess, just to get out of like a toxic environment. Of course. Um, so I moved uh, to inch still in school housing, but now recently I'm actually outside of housing. So nice. I get a, a housing allowance. Yes, same. And each school is different. So the typical like public or hog one, like it's 400. Yes. And also depends on where you are staying at, but mine is like 500. And it's nice, girl. It's, it's she cute. So okay. <laughs> it's a three bedroom, actually. Oh, I'm looking for that. If I can find that in Seoul and move like into Seoul. Like I said, <laughs> if you have furniture, you got to you gotta make do. So I have a really big ass couch. I love that. Like a family size. Couch. Like, a, it, what is it reclining? Uh, not a reclining. No, a, I got an uh, ottoman, though. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But it makes a little L shape. It's <laughs> like, oh, they say like a four person couch. Beautiful. Yeah. So I had to find a space for that. I used to live in like a. A duplex? Yes. Yeah. But you could not stand up there. <laughs> That's one thing I love about this place. I yeah. can stand all the way up. I love it. It's very, it, it actually feels like it's, they did it. 
the smart way where like they don't typically use the spaces very well for they one room. Don't they really don't like how your like stairs are? It's like that's amazing. I'm I'm very grateful, and mm-hmm. it's all about. We were talking about this um, in the last episode. It's about your connections. It's about who you know mm-hmm. and who can put you out in front of the right people. Mm-hmm. So I made like this uh, Korean friend, and he was basically just taking me all around to the different places that I liked. Right. And we stumbled upon this one, and I had a fit as soon as I saw it. Like She's there's the a one. separation in the bathroom. <laughs> there's corners. Like, there's corners. <laughs> like this is a little nook, you know. Yeah. I just I was just envisioning everything that I had, and because at the time I didn't have that much. Mm-hmm. Like most majority of the things here. You know, I purchased when I got here Mm -hmm. because I wanted to just, oh, this is start afresh, you Mm -hmm. know, but absolutely love it because the the housing in Korea, you know, tell me if I'm wrong, is sometimes the architecture and the way that they build the homes is just tragedy. Yeah. Like, Like, so you'll find like some places, the washing machine, like it's typically in a kitchen or office towel. But there'd be, like, if you're finding, like, a bigger apartment, the washing machine was, like, in the bathroom or, like, in this, like, little, like, whatever. And then I was looking for bigger apartments, like, at least two bedrooms. And there'll be, like, a random nook. And I'm like, what do you do with that? <laughs> what what do you do? Like, a little mini shelf from Ikea. And then, yeah, and what? there'll be, like, three bedrooms or two bedrooms. And I'm like... You can't even fit a bed in here. What is the purpose of it? Seriously. Oh, my goodness. And that's if I'm trying to move to Seoul because I just want to experience what it's like living Mm -hmm. there. But I know like the rooms there are insanely small and and you have to. Yes. And expensive. And I'm just like, okay, well, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Like, I mean, you're different than me because I would never. (laughs) I don't like I'm like. I'm a very like in the minority here, but I would never move to Seoul. <laughs> so why? Incheon life is the lie, the best. <laughs> here, I'm a bar person. I like Same. going to bars and like chilling and stuff like that. And like I like to dance. So like when I find a bar that's like you know it's a little dancey dance, you can do that then uh, that's like my vibe that is actually the best vibe because that's why i go out in itaewon Mm -hmm. it's places like waikiki and uh juantos like juantos is the latin club Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of people in there dancing that one but it was like kind of dead actually i need to go out to itaewon i was actually in the itaewon tragedy me too yeah, so that was actually my first experience. <laughs> the first experience? It was. Were you, like, in the crowds or in... So, you know, the f- infamous, like, alleyway? Yeah. I wasn't... I was, like, near there. Like, I was at the, like, waiting... My friend was running late, thank God. Because... <laughs> yeah, honestly. Um, at the exit, even the subway was... It was crazy. Um, It was very traumatic and, like, emotional, like part of my life because it really did affect me like the next like day absolutely was it but, like a survivor's guilt kind of thing um it, maybe it's more of like just seeing all mm. of these people like like bodies piling up and stuff like that and I you think saw that more, yeah, yeah yeah jesus and like not knowing what was going on because i was in the crowd like so this is like the alleyway, right? And then mm. like the corner, I was just waiting right there. And it's like even more disheartening um, to see other people just like making joke of it. You people know? were making jokes of it? Yeah. So when Itaewon was happening, they were like, okay, let's go to Hongdae. Hongdae's where it's at, you know? And then it was mostly, like, you know, the college kids, like, like mm. foreigners too, even Koreans. But like, they were they do like busking, you know, but like it's like karaoke on the streets and like during this whole time you'll just hear people trying to do karaoke and I'm like, Y'all need to stop and and you see like news reporters. So while I was there like uh live time, I would like hear, Oh, like one person died, ten people died. Yeah. And we don't really know what happened, like uh, even like my mom and Mary go, Okay, what happened? Like y'all just partying and well not not like like caring or whatever like it was some light-hearted thing yeah like no like things like this happen and unfortunately it happened while halloween was going on but if you have to understand like it was like the first 
like reopening of like Korea, like Itaewon. And Itaewon is like the most famous for like Halloween, hence why everyone goes there. But what is also like just how I like what I've heard. I don't I feel a little more hopeful. I'm trying to, but with the government mm. not answering like calls, not having any like police like enforcement out there but right. now you'll see it everywhere yes. any festival um so that was like when i heard about that and recently it's still an open case mm. because these families yeah. you know they want to know why and how it happened why did they let this happen not saying that like it was like a planned thing yeah. but, but how could it have gotten that far but like and everyone can see, like, this is the first night, like, of, like, reopening since COVID. Right. You had to take some precautions, but there was none. Hey there, listeners. We're taking a quick break to say thank you for tuning in. Your support means the world to us, and we're happy to have you along for the ride. If you're enjoying the show and you want to keep up with the latest episodes, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram for any updates or behind the scenes content. For those of you who are craving the full experience, our Patreon is the place that you want to be. Subscribers get access to full-length episodes and even some spicier unfiltered content that we just can't show anywhere else. Do you have a burning question or a topic you're curious about? Drop us a message and we'll do our best to feature your question in future episodes. And now, without further ado, let's get back to the show. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the food culture here okay. in Korea. Like, we are getting into the juicy of the juicy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? How is the food here? Oh, uh, so food here, it's mostly, like, stew-based and with a side of rice and, of course, banchan, so side dishes. Um, if you go towards, like, the more foreign food, right? westernized food, so non-Korean food, you know, you got to be careful of your portion sizes. It's very less here. Absolutely. And so, and more on the pricier side, of course, because like that food that they hand out, they got to get the culture first. And then, you know, like that's expensive. <laughs> so you're paying for that, really. But they really gear towards more aesthetic as well, too. So you'll see a bunch of cafes. They are all over the place. All over the place. But the craziest, like... Like as a for like the food industry is the mint chocolate. <laughs> I hate it. Like I like mint chocolate, <laughs> but not as mint chocolate rice cake. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So to be fair, I don't like chocolate. Okay, right. So end of discussion. Here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I get, I understand, like why. People like the whole mint chocolate thing, but I mm -hmm. think it's the funniest thing they, to see it as a whole debate. They take something and then like get a snowball. Let's just keep going. Snowball. It's like, <laughs> let's just run with it. You, you see a lot of people like convenience store, like food, and then just like mix things together. Yes. That's what I wanted to do when I first got here. So I do like like a the spicy budok with like the cheese crab yes i get the sausage and like a sambap so the triangle kimbap oh it's so good um i really like how there's always like snack shops here so uh kimbap jungkook so kimbap heaven is like the most infamous one and it's like a very big chain mm-hmm and you'll just see like all these like ajima, so like older ladies working in the kitchen. So you know it's gonna be good. Period. Um, food vendors. Of course, I went to like the the famous one. Do you know um that Netflix show where it's like they go to famous stalls around the world, and Seoul was one of them. The one where I went to Myeongdong Market. Yeah, the noodles. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So apparently, a recent thing is that because of that episode mm -hmm. ever since then people the vendors are like 
probably not getting enough business. Mm -hmm. And then they are upping their price and they're like cheating out, like especially foreigners, yes, out of their money of what they could have been, yep. you know. But like typically at a vendor, it's like you can probably get a bowl, like a really big bowl of noodles for what, like four bucks? Yeah, I think six so. Six bucks. But like not even just the noodles, like the set. And it's a lot of food. Yeah. So now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so hungry. What's your favorite Vietnamese dish? Oh, that's a. Oh, would you ask that question? Right now it's Mubo Hue. Okay. Um, and there's actually like a city Hue, like city. That's okay. like their dish. It ah, came main, from that dish. Beautiful. And so to try it out, that's like a place to go if you know that dish, especially. Mm -hmm. But. I say that because it's spicy, it has lemongrass in it, and it's so traditional, so authentic that you can't see it in restaurants, like especially here. Wow. They try. Right. They just do like a meun salguksu. Mm. <laughs> but this dish has like, you know, jokpa. Mm. It's like pig feet. Yes. It's that in there. Oh. With like liver and stuff. Of course, you don't have to have it, but it's so... It's their kind of weird food mm. that I love. And wow. so I think that's what makes it even more special. Wow. When did you first try it? When I was young. Oh. Like, it's like my mom would cook it. Like, oh, that's awesome. So I grew up like eating Vietnamese food, rice every day kind of wow. thing. Yeah. I wish my parents would have like giving me more options in regards to food. I was very picky as a kid. Mm. It was tragic, honestly. Mm. <laughs> so I grew up like Mexican food is like the gist of how far outside of the American culture that I went because okay. I adore Mexican food. Oh, who doesn't? Okay. <laughs> but um, outside of that, I didn't eat too many, you know, I rarely ate any Asian dishes because I had a little trauma when I was <laughs> younger. My mom uh, took us to like a Chinese restaurant and fed me some things that I did not appreciate. And then mm. from that point on, I was like, no, all Asian food is the same food. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, you guys. Yeah. It's really not. Like mm. the difference between the way that different countries cook their food mm -hmm. and it could be the same type of food, mm -hmm. but just a different way of making it. Mm -hmm taste a thousand times better right. than the previous one. So different culinary skills, different presentation, different yes. style of eating. Like I would say Vietnamese food would be more on the herbier side, the lighter side. Like you could do a Vietnamese diet and you can like re do like, you know, of course, um, replace some ingredients to make it healthier. But I think it could be like a, like a health diet absolutely so because there's just so much herbs and we only use like rice products and not even milk so i'm low-key lactose intolerant <laughs> i get that yeah but it's funny i say thai would be the spicy yes. of the food um with chinese food i think they're just they're the most culinary like certified because like all that heat yes even thai food like stir frying and all those authentic chinese dishes um, I say that Thai food is like my least favorite just because I don't think America does it justice. I really believe that Agreed. But I've never had. I'm going to Thailand soon, though. So I'll test that theory. <laughs> Thai food is amazing in Thailand. Right. I never had it outside of Thai right. Thailand before. So I don't really I can't compare the two. Mm -hmm. But when I had the food there, magnificent, right. divine spicy mm -hmm. like every like not just asian countries but like everyone has their own curry dish yes and i found like like just amazing i think like the curry that i love most is jamaican curry yes oh it is so good and their jasmine rice together yeah. so i like uh jamaican curry um probably because it's most similar to maybe vietnamese curry okay because of the lemongrass. Oh, I should have tried like, it. But like Jamaican curry is more of like a stew. And yes. I love bone. I love yes. <laughs> yes. My friend would say the pain and suffering. I need to feel that. And I'm like, okay, that's a little too much. <laughs> okay. Let's, that's hilarious. Let's, let's, let's Relax. Re let's respect the other, uh, our other friends <laughs> that don't eat meat. <laughs> but no, nah, it's just like, I need to feel the pain and suffering of the <laughs> <laughs> You know, but some people are just passionate about their food. About their meat, yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> but um, when, I think that's also like a thing about Thai food that puts them on a lower standard on my scale because 
uh, Thai curry is more, it can be on right. the sweeter side and like very coconut milk. Absolutely. Concentrated. Absolutely. Whereas, you know, Jamaican curry is like bone, stew. I love that stuff. Beautiful. Yes. <laughs> and the yellow color. But I totally agree with you in regards to like how Vietnamese food is more healthy and more mm. light and just natural. Like when I went there, my stomach, like I have like stomach issues mm -hmm. and my stomach was or it felt the best it has felt in years. Right. Like the it's food was just so clean. I really suggest doing a food tour every time you visit a different country because yeah. that's what I'm going to do from here on out just because of Vietnam. Yeah. I travel for food. That's, yeah, that's it. That's I, it. Love that. I love that. <laughs> I love that. I travel for clothes and perfume, but you know, or electronics. I I have my little steez, but food. I guess I get scared because of my stomach issues. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely you have to be aware when trying new foods, especially in Asian countries where vendors are outside most of the day. So you have to. They say be careful of vendors who don't have any business uh, right. because it's not rotating out. It's not fresh. And of course, like in Vietnam, you can get like lobster and here you can like get oysters on the side, which is to me is kind of weird because you're not it's not oyster is not like a prominent mm. thing or, or even like lobster here, too. But Vietnam is known for like their lobster, which is kind of crazy to me. Wow. Yeah. But like they'll they be like raw fully? things. Yeah, this is definitely it's like flamed. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. OK. <bet. laughs> yeah, it's roasted. Ooh. We love a good roast. <laughs> the dates that I've been on, like. Oh, so you all you eat is like hamburgers and stuff like that. I'm like, no. But I eat a lot more of Korean food than the Koreans do here. And some I've met a lot that don't even eat spicy food or can't handle spicy food. Really? But like in you'll see it a lot as a foreigner that they will tone down the spiciness or ask you. Absolutely. And I'm just like, what? Like, America is not, like, bland. I understand where it's coming from. Right. Sorry to my light skin, my like, people. <laughs> but, like, people with melanin, really? <laughs> not, not including me. <laughs> because mm -hmm. of my stomach. Yes. But, like, on a case by case, like, if I did not have stomach issues, I would eat spicy but because if, I love it. If it's, like, a restaurant where it's, like, it's just spicy food, like, why am I why am I here? I appreciate you asking me like oh it's like it's like hotter than shin ramen, they would say. I'm like, it's okay. We got it. Yeah, but it's crazy because um I had a friend and she, her ex now at the time, but her boyfriend then at the time, um he cannot eat spicy food. And mm. then when the the I still have beef with it. Cause the uh waiter was like it is spicy. Like, how spicy do you want it? Right. And, like, you can't eat spicy food and, like, stuff like that. And we, we me and her can eat spicy food, but he didn't say anything. He's Korean. He could have, like, communicate that. Like, oh, it's 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 for me. Like, wow. he did not he did not stick up for us. Like, wow. you're the one that can't eat spicy food, so you better say that it was you, you. that cannot <laughs> eat spicy food. So... That's I've only probably had that once where I felt like it was not to its potential, like the Korean food. Mm. So I've had a lot of experience where like when I do eat it and they do like make it to its potential, they're like applauding. <laughs> like, wow, you did so good. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. <laughs> and um even like foreigners speaking like Korean, so like hello, I know I say mm. they're like wow. Yes, like the look of joy on their face. Anytime mm -hmm. you say anything in Korean, it can yeah. be the most simple word ever. They're just so yeah. behind it. But that's cute. I love yeah, that. It, it makes cute. you feel good, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I had a friend. He's actually half Korean, half Chinese. Mm -hmm. And we're having a picnic. And there's like very, probably sh there's strict rules when you're picnicking. And like, there's there's no need for police when there's like ajamas and ajashis <laughs> everywhere, right? Because they came up to us and we're like have a like a portable burner because we're making like a uh, that galbi. Okay. So, and we're cooking it and like there's flames, yes, but and we're like under like pine trees. You know how tall pine trees are, guys? Yeah. It's up. It's up there. There's and we're on a wood deck. Like I think that's safer than being on like grass, right? You know. So they're like, 
hey, you're Korean. You should know that, like, you don't eat here. He's like, I'm not, though. Because <laughs> he can speak fluent Korean. Oh, I see, I see. So, like, he's explaining, like, you know, this to them. And then we just had to pack up and, like, mm. go. But it's that kind of, like, injustice. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like picnic culture is really big here in Korea, mm-hmm. like especially at um, Han River. Yeah. I love it though. You, it's they'll bring so like fun. tents. Yeah. Let's talk about the comparison, you know, between the Eastern food and Western food and mm-hmm. like what that's really like. I know you talked a little bit about the blandness and the spiciness, but mm-hmm. like, I guess, what is the biggest difference and what's the biggest similarity let's see i would definitely say that for like korean food they are also like big on domestic grown and they find out that if these ingredients come from another country unless they advertise that you know saying but they really like to stick with their roots i didn't know that so when they make food if it's like traditional food like there has to be like a soup there has to be some sort of fermented like kimchi or Mm. something like that um a lot of things in like pancake patty form like um yes like that or uh yeah like dakgabi or something like that or tokabi. I'm sorry. I can't <laughs> Korean right now. This camera is... <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> no worries. But, um, also, like, with, like, stew dishes, uh, I really like when you are finishing a meal. Mm. I think this is very, like, definitely more in the Korean culture field. So, say if you finish, like, eating, like, your pork bits, and you can make, like, a bokumbap. So like fried rice oh, on right. the grill or even like with soup dishes. So there's a lot of um, fusion restaurants. So if I go to a Vietnamese restaurant and they're doing like shabu shabu, first of all, I don't consider shabu shabu as a Vietnamese dish. I think mm-hmm. that's more like Thailand no? mm. or even like more Chinese. But there's been like Vietnamese food. I'm like, I've never had it like this before. So they would also put like rice at the bottom, make some like juke, so like porridge. Yes. Um, I think that's like the best thing to do, especially like first time coming to Korea or like first time to Korean like food. Mm-hmm. It's like they keep like adding things adding in, things in, and just like sealing it off with like a bow, and just it's great. I love that. I actually so, yeah. seen those like you know the convenience store things to where like they'll finish their ramen and then they mm-hmm. put eggs in the, the bottom yeah, and make the souffle. Tea. Yeah, <laughs> like it's so cute. Oh yes, so it's like less wasteful. In Absolutely, way, but you're still getting more out of it. So like any restaurant, most of the restaurants, especially like grilled restaurants, they will have like ramen or they have like rice, and you can ask for the bokumbap service. Yeah. That's so cool. I think that's like the best part of being here. So ah, I love that. I love that. What's the biggest challenge you've had while being here in Korea? Mm-hmm. I did hear that you were in a car accident and <laughs> you had a hospital stay. Like yeah, what yeah, yeah. what was going on um, with that? So there is some streets where like it's like nightlife. So not as compared to like Hongdae. That's another reason why like in Chun it's just like there's nightlife prominent and like really good restaurants. But in those areas, there's a lot of parallel parking, very small streets. Mm. And it's normal for people to cross back and forth. And like sometimes the streets be dirty. And so yeah. I was like on my way to the gym actually Mm -hmm. and my phone was dead i was like just procrastinating going to the gym and i was like there's chargers there so like when my phone dies i'll just go right (laughs) turned out to be the worst thing ever (laughs) so um there was like some muck on the street and i'm like looking down and before i was like scanning the area so it was like a three-way so my gym is like here i'm like walking here right i'm pretty sure it was on the crosswalk too but there was like kind of like 
like there's no cars moving, but they were like trying to get in, whatever. Okay. So it was very slow. I definitely saw the drivers. I saw the cars, but uh, there are some cars parked parallel. So this car is on the street, and there's some cars here, and I'm like walking here, and then he he was just turning in. So okay. it's not like I was like, you know, rammed. Right. Um. But you were hit like decently hard. Uh, it was decently hard. Yeah, yeah. I would say. Um, so it was like a smaller car, so like a sedan, and it hit me in the front because I like turned and I saw it, and then like mm. uh, to me, like for a split second, I thought, you know, he sees me, right? Like that because I saw him turning in, like inching over, and then I was like, oh shit, do I just step in that? And I looked up, and then boom, wow! So it hit me like forward, so I had a lot of bruises here and like my thighs and stuff like that. And so it felt like more of like a tackle. So like it hit me and then like I fell to the side. Mm. And it was more like dazing, more like wow, that just happened more than like injury. But I knew like from like my background, like what I've been taught and stuff like that is the head is the most important thing. So uh I was like just like sitting there making sure I don't move and saying is there any head injury am I okay to be honest I probably didn't feel anything from the adrenaline whatever mm. it was more like oh soreness from like sitting too long right kind of thing okay for the f- the front um and then also like where the fuck is this person like he's he's not coming out of the car and um so I'm like my attention's towards that and I'm seeing how long he would like come out to help me, you know. Did he drive away? No, he didn't. Okay. So that that was that's what I was like <laughs> waiting for. But right. like, there's so many cameras around there. Oh, there's no right. way he could get out of it. But you can tell like this is a common occurrence because it was just me and him like talking during this whole thing. I mean, he pulled over to the side, of course. But like in America, they would never. Right. <laughs> but like it was just like, oh, this is that's where they got it. Like kind of handling wow. thing. Um, Did he like apologize? Was he apologizing so to you? Like he got out of the car. He checked his car first. So there's a scratch because it was winter and I was wearing like just a light, like fuzzy, like yeah. zipper. So I think my zipper is probably what whatever. And then he like pulled me up, like yoink, <laughs> like yanked me up. And I was like, first of all, what the hell? Why did you move me? Like something could have been wrong with me. Yeah, exactly. It's like. I was just like, uh-huh. and like, of course, I can like communicate somewhat in Korean, but like, it's not after getting right hit by a car. And I'm like, and my phone's dead. So I was like, I know I have to have this like information and stuff. So I got those details, but I think seeing like I can't communicate him that well. He was using like translator in his phone, but. It was saying, like, I have to go to work. I have to, like, do you need to go to the hospital? I didn't go to the hospital. <laughs> okay. Um, I called, like, people as soon as I got home. I went to work the next day, and then they found out, like, I got hit by a car. And then, then we went to the hospital. So, like, my boss handled it, like, I need to see the black box, whatever. And um, took me to the hospital, and it was, like, three days it was like a wednesday and to the rest of the week wow um and i think that was just for like insurance Mm. claims and stuff like that so i did get a lot of money from that and she probably pulled some strings and be like she's a very valued worker Mm. and so i I got some money payback and especially since there wasn't like any serious injuries it was just bruising right so more like pay me for my emotional trauma and my Mm, bruises okay mm -hmm. for what could have been what can (laughs) be um i'm not gonna lie i like to say this but like a little just little hint i was like what was the ceo (laughs) (laughs) give me my k drama moment my k drama moment no not after that but (laughs) <laughs> yeah yoink moment <laughs> yo like I was so who, who yanks you up like that and you don't know me yeah. and like you don't know what neck, you've you done. know my, yeah so that's insane he was being really sketch about like showing the black bots and he was like you know on the translator he was like you were on the crosswalk and so is your fall and stuff and they're like what about my car damages and so he was trying to get money out of me and I'm like, if so, like, 
if I don't like if he reported to insurance, he would like be screwed, right? Right. So he was just trying to like just make up for it just by making giving, you feel bad about it. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I'm glad think, like yeah. things worked out. Yeah. Well, what about your biggest triumph in Korea? Like, what has been the thing that you're like, this is what mm. keeps me here? Hmm. I think it's like more of like a long run thing. So okay. my goal is to um, get better at the language, of course, and like make, build my own life, you know, like as like my parents have like they um try to get more into the culture try to make a name for themselves and like just like building life and so I feel like that's kind of like ironic or kind of cool to see like I'm also doing the same thing mm. like leaving my home country and then just being an adult and absolutely like trying to figure out life and build that for myself and I think the triumphs are the little things. So my I'm building my community. I found a place where I feel at home. Good. So that's why also Incheon is will always be my second home. Um just proud of like how I'm becoming more stable and like even if I have bad moments, I'm still like picking myself back up i'm not running away from a fight mm. kind of thing and just like the appraisal from like the natives here like wow you're amazing like what you've done in your life what you're doing now and still networking and um trying to plan out the future but still having it like it's still open Beautiful. so i'm like i'm just seeing how it goes so back then when I chose like my college degree, it's very cookie cutter. Everyone does the same thing to get this job, right? Mm. I hated that. You're right. And I, I, well, I'd grown to hate it. At first, I was like, no, I need that because then my life is figured out. But that's not what life's about, right? Of course. It's like that nine to five, going home and then maybe making dinner. Even though I don't make dinner every day here, I'm still living. <laughs> I'm still living life. Like, I can still hit up friends. Like, hey, let's do this, whatever. But um, I think that's my... I'm grateful for just to have these experiences, the good ones and the bad ones. <laughs> good. Because it makes you who you are. It's yeah. like the full rounded version of you right. cuz without the good and the bad then what are we like i feel like being here like right like right here right now with you in this podcast i'm like oh my gosh like is this what my life is like kind of like more becoming it's like you are like recording part of like my history right now right. so i thank you oh. i applaud you thank um, you for coming cause... and letting me <laughs> Because podcasts, you know, like, this is not easy things to do. And, like, you know, making a name out of yourself. Like, what are you going to leave behind kind of thing. So, like, that's what I'm trying to do in my life, especially in my 20s. Like, trying to make a name for myself. Like, what I'm proud of. And even if I have rest days, like, I just be a bum on, on the couch That's like okay. it's it's for your mental health <laughs> it, it's, it's, like literally i say that all the time yeah. like sometimes just waking up right. and doing the day even if mm -hmm. there's nothing like you've triumphed mm -hmm. over the day because yeah. some people it's extremely hard for them to do even that right you know so i wholeheartedly agree and I wish you all the best of luck on your journey you. and trying to find out what is meant for you because it is not an easy journey. No. Like I, you know, being that I'm in my, you know, early 30s, a lot of times people come out here and they're in their 20s. You know, mm -hmm. they just graduated college. You know, they're not really sure what they want to do. It's more of like, oh, let's just try this thing out. You know, I'm mm -hmm. in a different stage in my life. And I'm still at this, like, I don't know, but I'm going to do something that makes me happy. Right. I'm going to do whatever brings right. me joy. And I will find out what I'm supposed to do 
on the way. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very open to opportunities and open to possibilities. And I think how I got to the podcast arena is like, I love having conversations with right. people. It's so fun to me. <laughs> I love to encourage people. I love showing love to people. I love hearing people's stories and just, you know, diving deep into personal connections with people and which again, opens doors for other things, mm -hmm. but it's just a beautiful moment in time where you can hear someone's life story right. and share that with other people. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I got into this podcast setting because I'm like, yes, this seems like something that I could do for the rest of my life. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so I am hoping like the video editing is <laughs> the hardest part <laughs> yeah. of it all. But yeah. like this, ah, so much mm -hmm. love, so much fun for me. Yeah. It's it's nice to like experience like, like, their stories from them. Um, I have a friend that would travel countries and I was like, what is the one thing that you have to do or typically do when you travel to a country? And he says he goes to a bar and he just talks to a person at the bar and hear how they've become themselves, like their life story kind of thing. And you learn a lot, you know? Absolutely. So not all, not all heroes wear capes, am I right? Stupid woman. Now we stop. <laughs> now, if there is one piece of advice, or e even if it's multiple, hmm. what would you give people who are looking to visit Korea or who are looking to come and live abroad in Korea? What kind of advice would you give us? I feel like the biggest. Thing with foreigners coming here, traveling here, is that they tend to compare everything from Korean culture, Korean food, Korean lifestyle, and then just like, oh, they don't have this here. I'm like, of course they don't have this here. It's, a whole it's different not country. your culture. <laughs> it's not your culture. So like, really, like, that's what I really like, really appreciate and like, be open to like the culture here. And the, uh, the also the people, you know, they are technically still not used to foreigners being here. Right. And especially like having, you know, English schools are bittersweet. Like the education here is so strict with English and that's kids are like not even wanting to study English. And it's just like a demanding thing you have to do. And so it's a very big stressor to them. So, like, with that hatred for that and some people, it kind of, like, shows through with how they treat foreigners or treat people in general. Yeah. But, like, again, like, do not treat this as if this is your turf. Don't treat this as if this is your home. Like, if you want to experience something new, you have to try new foods. I'm not saying don't try everything, like, life's octopus or anything. If that's not your thing, that's not your thing. Like, seafood is it's, it's a palate thing. That part. Um, but I see a lot of people living here and like hating it because, oh, I can't get my stuff from home. I can't do this here where I can't cook my actual foods. Like that's understandable. But you chose if you did your research, you know, Korea is still developing in a way. And so don't be too harsh on it. You know, you can't just because your country is better. Like people will scream like my country is the best. Of course. That's your biased opinion. <laughs> Literally. That's your opinion. But you can't just say, like, things so nonchalant. Like yeah, that. absolutely. So I I think, like, we should, like, come together and just, like, make fusion food or try your best. Like, if you miss home, then that's this time that you should make effort to go home and visit and bring stuff back with you or... Network and like if you have someone from like the military, you can get some products from there. Definitely. It's just like, how are you going to adapt? It's not about like surviving. It's also just like adapting to what you do have and what you don't have and what can you do with that. So that's what I mean by staying open minded, be flexible kind of thing. That is some beautiful advice. Thank <laughs> you. I love that. Yeah. And to end off on that note, 
we appreciate you for being here once again. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> in. She's such a bubbly and loving personality, guys. I literally met this girl and I knew immediately that I would like her, <laughs> like that I wanted to meet her again mm -hmm. because her spirit and her personality is so bright and so nice. And so I immediately was like, hey, let me follow you on Instagram. I hit you up <laughs> for this episode. Of, like, give me all the deets, okay? <laughs> so, but yes, yeah, so again, it's been such a pleasure to have you and our second conversation was divine. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been Passport to Perspectives. And if you want to see the full episode, please follow me on Patreon. You can get the full episode there. I will put up the short and spicy episode <laughs> up on YouTube. So yes, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>